Hello my friends, me Nagik here. Doesn't it look great, this whole setup right here? On the left there's a nice 17 inch LG CRT monitor, semi high end. On the right the most beautiful PC case ever made by mankind, the fractal design North Excel charcoal black, without a transparent side panel or RGB lights, of course. And all of it is running Red Dead Redemption 2 on ultra settings, at a glorious resolution of 1920 by 1440. So, how do modern games look and run on a CRT from 2004? But what about 2D retro games? And how does it compare to a 240Hz LCD screen? We'll find the answers to these questions and more in this video, but until then, let's talk a bit about this monitor and the challenges of using a CRT, especially this one. This is an LG F700P and it has some decent specs. It's 17 inch with the case but the real screen is 16 inch because that's how it was back in the day. It has a dot pitch of 0.24 which isn't great and it can run at 75 Hz at 1600 by 1200 which is very very good. I'm connecting it to my modern computer using this display port to VGA adapter. Nothing too fancy but it gets the job done. The PC is my main computer, an i7 Alder Lake with an RTX 1470 and 64 GB of DDR4 memory. It's pretty good and has other cool stuff inside too. Sadly, I had to keep the display at 60 Hz because otherwise it started doing some weird things and you wouldn't want to watch the video anymore. So I hurt my eyes a bit just to show you something. Ok, time to stop complaining and relax a little bit. And I'm relaxing by playing one of the best looking modern games, Battlefield 1. Lately I've been buying a lot of Battlefield games because I want to make something. While digging around the internet I saw that many people say Battlefield 1 looks the best in the series, so I said ok, let's see. But I didn't really get to see anything here because I think I ended up in a multiplayer match, so I started the campaign mode, since I've started playing uh, the campaign a few days ago. Big disclaimer, in the video it doesn't look or feel nearly as good as it does in real life. In real life the CRT screen looks better and moves more smoothly, so you just have to trust me on this. Also you're going to see that the CRT has a blue tint, but in reality this does not exist. Ok, the campaign, I'm somewhere in the desert, a train has derailed and I need to get something from that train. But the train is guarded by some enemies. I get instructions from someone named Lawrence, uh, of Arabia, that Lawrence. There is a world of difference between seeing something and having it in your own hand. This is not a super fast shooter, so I can't really test how quick the input feels, especially since the weapon shakes a bit in my hand. Realism? I don't know. But what's obvious from the moment you enter the map is the colors. They look natural. They're not screaming at you. They don't look fake or too bright. The textures aren't too colorful either. As some people might say, the colors feel real. Also, everything in the game looks super sharp. I don't see jaggies or weird pixels popping out of the textures. Everything is smooth, it's like having 32x anti-aliasing, it's unreal. But it makes sense, at 1920 by 1440 on a 16-inch screen we have a PPI pixels per inch of 150, while on a 1080p 25-inch monitor, as we'll see later, the PPI is much lower, just 88. So yeah, realistic colors, smooth textures and objects, and even though it's running at 1920 by 1440, the HUD, the UI, the menus, whatever you want to call them are easy to read, they're not too small, everything is fine. Also I don't miss a widescreen at all, 4x3 is totally ok, and when you add some crazy good music on top of these amazing graphics, this is it. And if you think GTA 5 looks too white, don't worry, that's just how it is, it's because of ray tracing. It's too bright my friends, feels like badly done HDR from the mid 2000s. But it's ok, wait till you see how it looks on an LCD with ray tracing on, it's gonna hit you hard, like a splash of cold water that wakes you up from your nightmares. This is the GTA 5 enhanced edition, you know the new patch with ray tracing and all that good stuff. I'm running it at 1920x1440, everything cranked to maximum. If I try this resolution on an old school game, the menus would be tiny. But newer games handle higher resolutions way better, the UI scales properly. The game itself looks good too, maybe a bit too bright or washed out, but just like Battlefield 1, it's super smooth, especially that the driving in GTA 5 is excellent. Yeah, the cars handle perfectly. GTA 5 just feels right, natural, kinda like Blizzard games always do, they just feel good to play, you know, makes you wanna keep playing. Good job Rockstar. 
Like with any driving game on a CRT monitor, the biggest wow moment when you switch back from an LCD is when you pan the camera around. You're braced for motion blur or some janky artifact, but nope. On the CRT, the camera movement is perfectly smooth, totally natural, doesn't strain your eyes at all. And then we have control. I gotta say, it's great that this new game still support 4x3 resolutions. Again, I'm running it at 1920x1440, maximum settings, and just like the others, it looks unbelievably good, like crystal clear. It looks so sharp, the game's AI probably started freaking out. Ok, ok, you might say, it looks amazing, but doesn't 60Hz hurt your eyes? Cause that's the maximum refresh rate the monitor can handle at 1920 by 1440 Surprisingly, no. If you're just gaming, like deep in the action, 60Hz isn't that noticeable. But when I switch back to the desktop, it really gets to me. Eyes get all moisty, massive headache. But refresh rate isn't just about whether your eyes hurt or not. It's also important for how smooth camera movement and stuff looks on screen. For more details, you gotta wait for the next video about CRTs. I'll dive deeper there. Anyway, the folks at Remedy, those that made control, nailed the game's vibe and atmosphere. Check this out, amazing design. And talking about amazing design, I forgot to mention the display's design. It's actually pretty cool, looks more modern than a lot of those chunky CRTs from the 90s or the early 2000s. It's kinda stylish. The colors, the whole vibe, it's nice to look at. This is my second one of these LG monitors. The first one died and this one broke too, but I managed to get it fixed. Yeah, this whole line of monitors has issues, just like someone was saying way back in 2004. I can totally confirm this, it's true. They have focus problems, like this specific monitor that I have is kinda blurry in the top left corner. But you only really notice it on the desktop, not so much when you're actually in a game. I let you guys decide if it looks good or not. Before we get into Red Dead Redemption 2, one more quick heads up. If everything looks kinda blue on the CRT, just know it doesn't look like that in real life. That's just how the camera picks up when recording, I don't know why. So, there I was, just cruising along under the moonlight and bam, Driscoll screw. Even though my aim was pretty bad, I somehow managed to win. I spent some time just roaming around, checking out the graphics, even zoomed in, it looks perfect. Night, day, rain, it doesn't matter. The colors look really natural too. You can see it best with the grass, it's not like crazy green. The whole time I was playing these games, I honestly never once wished my monitor was widescreen. We forgot all about 4x3. Do games really look better on widescreen than 4x3? For me, 4x3 feels more natural. Like it fits the field of view I can easily see without straining or moving my eyes around much. I really didn't think any game could have worse lighting than Need for Speed Most Wanted, the 2005 one. But thank you EA for throwing heat at me. They really blast you with light in this game, hits you right in the eyes. Seriously, it's way too bright, like I don't mind bright games usually, but this is like driving on the sun. The game looks good and hey, here's a little tip. If you wanna check if a racing game looks pixelated, look closely at the curves on the top of the car's roof. If you don't see jaggies or obvious pixels there, the game probably looks pretty sharp overall. The same goes for any curved part of the car body, really. And yeah, it looks good, but it's not quite as smooth as the other games I've tried. I can actually see some pixels here and there. You can see some pixels right here, on the left and right rear fenders. You can also spot them on the line between the fender and the trunk. And don't even get me started on the rear window. Pretty pixelated, check it out. Maybe you think I'm just seeing things or it's all in my head. Nope, I promise you it's not. You click this video and hopefully you'll drop a like if you enjoy it and a subscribe to get the real deal. And here it is, Need for Speed Heat doesn't look perfectly sharp, not even on a CRT. The camera movement is fluid and natural, you don't see any motion blur at all. Here are a few examples. Valheim is a really interesting game. Kinda wish I'd played it more than just a few hours. I did some exploring, chopped wood, 
gathered rocks, crafted some basic tools, built a little hut and a campfire, and that was pretty much it. I just had to try it on the CRT though, because it has a really nice look to it, a cool aesthetic. I let you guys decide if it looks good or not. And after that, we let our geek right here to give his opinion on how the tree looks. Pick, 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 pick the scritz, nimic, nimic. No jaggies, e perfect. Perfect. Thank you my friend, we always appreciate your overwhelming excitement for the things that really matter in life. But what about the fact that we've got crazy bright light again? Honestly, I'm sure that this is how cavemen felt when they first crawled out and saw the light. What light you might say? The Emperor's light, of course. We're checking out Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr. It's an ARPG, so naturally I gotta play it. Plus, it looks awesome, visually speaking, at least here at the start. I'm guessing it stays looking this good later on too. Even though the game looks and runs really well on this CRT, my first guess turned out to be right. It's definitely harder to read the interface and spot the little details in the level. The minimap is also harder to make out, same for the skills, icons and stuff. Ok, the real issue here is the screen size, not necessarily that it's a CRT. But hey, not everyone has a huge 21 inch CRT lying around. You really need a bigger screen for this. It's the first game out of all the ones I tried where I really felt I needed more screen real estate. But honestly, widescreen would probably help too, letting you see more of the sides. I think that's probably true for most ARPGs. So yeah, for certain type of games, widescreen is definitely better. But what about older games that you can basically only run properly on modern PC these days, like Chrono Trigger from Steam? How do they look? Let's kick things off with Star Wars Dark Forces 2 Remaster, which is a remaster of Star Wars Dark Forces 2. Even though it's a modern remaster, a lot of the feel is still pure 90s, so it actually fits perfectly on a CRT screen. Everything is crisp, clean and smooth. Looks really nice, the colors have this pleasant tamed look. And no matter how fast I move the camera around, I have zero motion blur. Chrono Trigger looks awful on my big 32 inch monitor, so I figured I tried it on a CRT. And yeah, it definitely looks better, but still not quite right. Even on the CRT, it's obviously pixelated. That's because the game was originally designed for CRT TVs, where the pixels would kinda blend with the scan lines to create this smooth mix of colors. But because PC CRTs have higher resolutions on smaller screens, you don't really get that same bleeding effect. So, the game ends up looking pixelated. But it still looks way better than on an LCD monitor. Let's do a quick comparison since we're already talking about it. Chrono Trigger, an old 2D game from the good old Nintendo days, but you can play it on a modern PC now. Thank you, Steam. Here's roughly how it looks on both monitors. Once again, the Midnight Expert give us his take. Mă scuzați, dar nu să compară asta cu asta. Adică asta e mult mai... Plus că aici vezi artefactele. Ia să facem niște poze mai de aproape. I took some pictures and here's what we've got. The two biggest differences are the colors and the pixelation. On the LCD, everything looks more saturated, less realistic, and also noticeably more pixelated. The green color especially looks better on the CRT, if you ask me. Here's roughly how Quake 3 looks and feels. I'm not going to do deep tests right now, that's for later, because I want to test it properly with a GTX 960 that actually has an analog output via DVI. But I will show you just one thing, check this out. Notice how on the CRT the railgun shot has already hit the target, while on the LCD it hasn't even fired yet. A 240Hz monitor versus a 60Hz monitor from 2004. Progress. Football games and other sports games are pretty much made to be played on a CRT. There's just no comparison. The difference is massive. Full stop. First off, yeah, the green grass on the LCD looks ok, maybe more artificial than actual stadium turf, but I don't hate it. It actually looks pretty good. I like having a bit of extra color sometimes. But please check out how the game moves when you're passing the ball or when the camera pans around. Also, my phone camera doesn't really capture this well. The difference is even bigger in real life. Just look how smooth and natural the movement is on the CRT, and how blurry it gets on the LCD. Now let's see it in slow motion. And here is the same player again during that transition. Do you see how blurred out the player looks on the LCD? And one more player, the same deal. Like I said, huge differences. The game just moves incredibly well on the CRT. In GTA 5, I've got two things to point out, motion handling and the lightning, again. Also, if your eyes are hurting from watching this, I'm sorry, just imagine how mine felt after testing all this for hours. Uitați-vă în stânga și încercați să citiți microsurgery. 
Bun, și acum uitați-vă în dreapta și încercați să citiți microsurgery. Din ce mișcă camera? A? Și azi de herți, 240 de herți. Să mișcă mai bine, să mișcă mai prost. Thank you, Geek. Now for some slow motion action. Again, pretty big differences. The second thing is the lightning and how the image looks way more blown out or burnt on the LCD. Here's an example. Not sure if you can tell, but the LCD loses texture detail because it's too bright. On the CRT, you can actually see those details better. It's the same problem in Need for Speed Heat. The lighting just blows out the scene so much you end up seeing blinding white spots. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the differences are pretty small. Either the game just looks that good or I don't know. Same deal with the more saturated colors on the LCD, but we already knew that. Otherwise, everything looks fine. The game itself, effects, lighting, the UI. Also, Red Dead 2 isn't really the kind of game where low input lag or zero motion blur are critical anyway. There's plenty more to talk about, but that we'll have to wait for a future video. What do you guys think about this whole idea of using CRTs for modern games? I actually know people who are still using only CRTs today, for everything. If they still made CRTs today, like 20 inch plus models with good refresh rates at higher resolutions, and maybe made them a bit less bulky, I'd pay serious cash for one. But sadly, they don't exist. The tech is dead. Game over. Thank you everyone for sticking until the end. Big thanks especially to all the channel members that support this financially. And until next time, have fun and be nostalgic.